Hello everybody and welcome to another Unity game development video. Today I will be going over the crouching mechanics that I've added to my first person shooter project. And as you can see here in the scene view, we have a capsule collider. There's two colliders there, a sphere one and a capsule collider. You can ignore the sphere collider for now. The capsule collider is what we're going to be focusing on. And I have a crouching behavior in my game where if I crouch here, you can see that the collider is shrinking on the Y axis. And uh, you can't see it exactly in this uh, scene view, but the center of the capsule collider is being shifted. So if you look over at the inspector, we have the height, which is set to 255 or 2.55. If I crouch, it is kind of lurping to 1.05. What's actually happening there is I am adding um, or subtracting a value from that. So we're not actually lurping it, we're de-incrementing it. And I'll show that in the script in a second. It creates more of a linear movement. I don't like the kind of uh, near asymptotic kind of uh, uh, moving towards a near zero value that kind of rounds out on the edges, that curve. I like kind of a linear value when it comes to these kind of things. Um, so that's what we're looking at there. And you can see the center on the y-axis set to uh, 0 0.05. So if I crouch here, um, you can see the center is also shifting upward to 0.75, and that's on the local axis of the object. So what we're doing is we're shrinking the um, capsule collider, and we're shifting the center of it up. So what's interesting about that in shifting it up is that it gives us a behavior akin to um, something you might be familiar with in, say, Half-Life or a Halo game where the bottom of the collider is being shifted up instead of the head of the character being shifted down. So the character is tucking in the feet for the crouching behavior, and that is useful for a few reasons. So if I uh, scroll out, most notable of which is uh, crouch jumping. So if I move up to this object here, this is about the maximum height that my character can uh, get onto a surface without crouch jumping. And if I go onto this next object and I try and jump, um, it's not working. But if I move into that direction, I jump and I crouch at the apex of my uh, jump, I can actually get onto that object. So that's very useful there. Um, obviously, uh, I said that was the most notable kind of thing about the crouching, but obviously the main part about crouching is crouching. So if I focus in on the player and I zoom out a bit, we can see that I cannot make it under this object here. But if I crouch, I can move under there. And if you pay attention here, I'm under it. There's no way you could tell that I'm not pressing the crouch key anymore, but I stop pressing the crouch key and the character is not returning to the standing height. And that's very useful because we don't want the character to move into the object or clip through it or kind of uh, uh, get stuck there and have the collider be pushed out in a way. So that's very useful in that instance. If I look over here in the scene view, that is being achieved with this magenta ray above the character. If you look, there is a ray currently above the character. Uh, it's much shorter when the character's standing, but it kind of tries to adjust to a similar height when they crouch. And that is detecting an above obstruction. It's useful when we're standing because if we jump and the character bumps their head on something, we don't want the character's jump to keep adding force to the character because that'll push the character into an object, creating more of a jittery movement. And when we are crouching, we want this to detect the above obstruction so that the character knows to stay crouched or if crouching into uh, an above obstruction to go into a full crouch and stay there. So that's very useful. Um, another interesting thing about the crouching mechanics that I've coded into the game if we pay attention in the game display right here, I am going to uh, shoot and you could see that the accuracy is actually affected by the stance of the character. So I'm gonna shoot a full clip over here into this object and then I'm actually going to play in slow motion and talk over and explain what's going on. So what you just saw there is that the radius of the kind of hip fire cone, that bloom, reaches to about the edge of that object. Now, if I shoot another clip while crouching, you can see that the um, hip fire cone isn't reaching the edge of the object now. And what's happening isn't that there is a general multiplier that's being applied to the overall um, radius of the hip fire cone. 
what's happening is that value that's being incremented from each shot that's being added to the bloom value is being multiplied as it's being added. So as I'm shooting, say that um, the max hip fire value is 10. If I shoot two shots with a hip fire value uh, that increments to about five, you could say I get two shots in before we get to the max hip fire value. But since I was crouching, I'm multiplying that value by 0.5 or so. I can adjust that value if I want to. So basically the amount that that's being incremented is halved. So I can get four full shots in before the maximum uh, accuracy of the bloom is increased. So that's very useful as well. Um, and now that I've kind of demonstrated everything, I can go into the script and show you what's going on. Right here, we have a uh, crouching function. And uh, at the beginning of the kind of uh, instantiation of this script, so when the object becomes awake or the game starts, uh, we are going to grab the collider and then we are going to establish a starting height. And basically that's grabbing the Y axis height of that collider. This current height value is going to be set to zero, but what's going to happen with that current height value is that is what we're going to be changing. We're going to be incrementing and de-incrementing those with a specific value. We have a two crouch speed and an out of crouch speed. When we are crouching, that two crouch speed is going to be subtracting uh, into the current height. And when we are coming out of the crouch, we are adding the out of crouch speed to the current height. And that current height value is being clamped between the crouch height and zero. So we're getting a negative number or we're getting zero. Uh, that's never going to go above zero because we're clamping it if it's at the current height um, or if it's going above the current height, we're actually going to clamp it at zero there. Uh, if it's going too low, we're going to clamp it at the crouch height. Um, this check for ground object here, my system for kind of detecting the ground for my character does not use the collider and rigid body of the character controller. It actually uses a ray that shoots down and detects the ground. So it's important that we're bringing that with us. We don't really want to parent that to the object because the kind of transform values are going to shift that around in an unpredictable way. So we're taking that object and we are moving it around based on the um, current height value for the collider. And it helps us a lot there because if the character is crouching, and uh, it is pulling up from the feet, then it's pulling up that um, detection from the ground so that the character knows to fall. So we get that smooth value of the character falling, um, and we get that linear movement, and it's very useful for that. Um, it, you might think that we get kind of imprecise values by just adding or subtracting a value from uh, what the height is supposed to be, but uh, I think it works very nicely. Uh, you get a slight bump in the character movement when it falls, but that's not too noticeable. You will never notice it unless you're looking specifically at the outline gizmo of like the um, collider in the scene view. And you definitely wouldn't notice it in game because the behavior around that will be using kind of like an IK for the legs. So the upper body will move down and you'll just notice the legs bend. So it'll be super smooth, unnoticeable. So we're getting the crouch key. So if we are getting the input for the crouch or we are detecting an above obstruction while crouched, then we are going to be de-incrementing that height. So we're going to start uh, crouching and that's multiplied by time dot delta time because we don't want the frame rate to affect that. We're also shifting the center of the collider upwards. So um, then we are affecting the accuracy here. We're getting the current accuracy value and we're setting it to a float that we've uh, established for the crouching accuracy, the standing accuracy, and the jumping accuracy. Um, so if you want to affect it that way, I think it's very smart to affect the jumping accuracy of the character so that you can't just kind of jump around and try and get shots that way. Um, it, something that I always thought was kind of annoying in Halo, uh, especially on something like a small map like Lockout, a lot of it is just people jumping around with the battle rifle. And there is definitely a lot of skill there. It's a very skillful game, but um, I think that implementing some system of punishment for a risk versus reward system. So what's going on is there is a risk and there is a reward for jumping and shooting. The reward is that you have that unpredictable movement. You might be able to shoot over cover or something like that. And 
it's still a viable um, tactic because the first shot is still going to have that minimum accuracy that's always being applied to the weapon. So um, you'll jump, you'll shoot, you'll still get that perfect shot. But if you continue to do it, that bloom will increase because of that multiplier. So um, we're if we're doing all that, if we're crouching or the obstruction is sensed mid-crouch, then crouching is set to true, else uh, it is set to false. So if there's no obstruction and we're not getting the input, then we are going to add the outer crouch value back into the current height, and we're going to reposition the center of the collider back to that starting center. And we establish that starting center just by grabbing the collider at the beginning of the script, and we are just uh, grabbing that Y value. So uh, there's a small force added onto it that just creates a, a slight upward movement that helps the character get back into that position, which is, can be useful. Um, and we are doing the accuracy values again for when the uh, character is coming out of the crouch. So overall, I think this is a very smooth, very simple system for how this works. Um, it works really well in the game, as you can see in both the game and the scene view. If you compare them side by side, you can see that the movement is pretty smooth. Um, and I really like how it worked out. So if you were having any kind of issues with this, uh, setting up a crouching system in your game, I think this is a very viable solution that you should consider. Um, maybe go check out other solutions that other people have posted online, compare them, um, and maybe you'll come back and decide to use mine. But I hope this has helped in some way. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go to my Twitter uh, of the same name. All my social media links are going to be on the link tree on my channel. But if you want to just find me without going through those links, it's always going to be low res dev with no spaces. Uh, I don't think anything really uses uh, case sensitivity. Um, but just look up low res dev with no spaces and you'll find my accounts. I post everything on Twitter and Tumblr and all that, and I'm trying to post more videos on YouTube. So, um, you know, hopefully you follow me or something. Now I'm just kind of rambling. I'm going to just jump around and shoot and crouch and everything. Uh, the game's working out really nicely. I've been working on it a lot more. Um, I've added some systems for picking up weapons that I really like, and I'll make a video on that soon. That's pretty much everything I wanted to say in this video. Um, hopefully you learned something from it. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. I'm trying to get better at explaining what's going on in the script and how it relates to the actual game. But um, I hope I could help in some way. Thank you for watching and uh, keep making games. Have a nice day.